A great welcome series isn't just welcome, here's 10% off. A great welcome series delivers a promise and builds trust, status, and belief. Now, after auditing hundreds of D2C brands, most brands are leaving a ton of money on the table with the Welcome Series. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the Welcome Series strategy, common mistakes that brands make, what you need, the exact email structure, split tests that you can run, and finally, the one question that you can ask that'll help to two to three X the results of your Welcome Series. So. Let's dive in. All right, so diving in right away, for most brands, the welcome series is just way too short. Most have one or maybe two or three emails. What we recommend is sending at least six emails in the welcome series, but you can make it even longer as long as you're changing it up. Now, it shouldn't all be the same content. It shouldn't be like, hey, here's 10% off. Hey, don't forget your 10% off. Hey, your 10% off is lonely or something like that. Like it needs to be varied, but each email should have a specific purpose. Now I'm gonna dive into what each email should look like for the first six later on in this video. But um, that's the first piece. You don't want to have just the same thing restated six different times. Now, the goal of the welcome series is to do three things. One, it's to build status. So show where you've been featured, show who loves you, all of that kind of thing. PR can be a really good thing to do here. Show trust, i.e. how it's made, making good on your promise. So like actually giving people the offer that they opted in for, if it's 10% off, $10 off, a mystery discount or whatever it might be. Showcasing reviews, showcasing behind the scenes, telling a little bit more about the story uh, and then belief showing results showing comparisons demonstrating use especially if it's something that people might be skeptical of if it works or not now the biggest thing that'll impact your results with the welcome series will be to test different offers to see what your audience best responds to now that might be a dollar off it might be a percentage off it could be a free gift with purchase it could be free shipping it could be a mystery gift discount there's so many different things that you can do but just please for the love of god don't have the boring one where it's like sign up for updates that sucks it will not have great opt-in rates. And then ultimately what's gonna happen is your welcome series is not gonna perform because of it. Now, what are some of the most common pitfalls? Well, like I said, the first thing is just, it's way too short. Second thing is most brands don't actually handle objections within the welcome series. It's just the same thing restated. Most brands just talk all about themselves and less about their customers. So if you're telling your brand story, tell it in a way that makes it interesting for your actual, for your customers, right? Don't just talk all about you and how you're great and how the founder's great and whatever. Talk about why that's actually important to the customer. Now, the next thing is most brands don't test different offers and usually it ends up being very, very boring. So what do you need to get this set up? Well, the first thing you need is the master list to add people to. We call this the newsletter. You need a pop-up to feed into the welcome series. You need zero party data. I'll touch on that in just a sec. And you need a discount or offer. Now here's how to actually build it out in Klaviyo. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, but I'm going to tell you kind of the filters that you want to use first. The first thing you want to do is create the trigger. Now the trigger is when someone subscribes to the list that's tied to the pop-up. This is really important. I've seen even big brands make the mistake of using the wrong list or something like that. The filters you want to have are placed order zero times since uh, overall time, checkout started zero times, added to cart zero times since starting this flow, bounced email zero times since starting this flow. This is a really important one. Email doesn't contain plus. This is one that most brands completely neglect, but it will allow you to get around a lot of spam emails. Placed order zero times in the last hour, just as like a safeguard, and then been in this flow zero times overall time. Ultimately, we don't want the same people getting into this flow. Now, the optional conditional splits here are going to be basing things off of people's desired outcome and the zero party data that you're gathering in the pop up. Okay, so in order to create the welcome series within Clavio, all you need to do is go to flows over here, click on create flow, and then you just want to search for the welcome series. And you can choose any one of these. Um, a couple of them are just for SMS. So just I just select this one, this kind of standard one, you're gonna to want to make sure the trigger is correct. So uh, you select the correct list here, uh, we just select newsletter, I'm gonna click use template. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna produce the initial email templates, it's gonna uh, produce the uh, time delays and everything. Really, you can just delete all of those. What you're gonna to want to do next is just add in those profile filters that I mentioned, the only one you'll really probably need help with here is just the properties about someone. So all you need to do is go into properties about someone click email doesn't contain plus and then you just want to add the rest of those filters and all of them are pretty much right here. Uh, and I'll give you a snapshot of what that looks like. Kind of looks like this once it's completed. So let's dive back into this. Okay, so now that we've gone through how to actually build it out, let's go through the email structure that you should be using. So the first one is email one. The main purpose of this is just to greet the subscribers, set the expectation, and ultimately deliver the thing that you promised them. You want this to be front and center. Usually you're gonna want this in the header. Usually you're gonna want this in um, the main body text as well. 
really all you need to do is just provide a brief intro about the brand and welcome people to the brand and then give them their thing, right? So a layout example here might be like, you have logo, header, and in the header you have, hey, get 15% off your, your first purchase. CTA is shop 15% off. Then you have your kind of intro to the brand, the mission, Again, why it's relevant to the customer, not just why uh, you care about it. Discount code or offer. Um, so you just wanna add that in, make sure you actually have that code and make sure it works. And then another CTA at the very bottom. So that would be email one pretty straightforward. Email two would be an offer reminder and then building more of an emotional connection with people. So the purpose here is to build an emotional connection by sharing your origin story, mission, values, whatever that might be. Talk about your brand story here and provide potentially three benefits of shopping with you. Now, what we wanna do here is also incorporate a reminder to use the discount, but we don't want that to be like the only thing the email is about. We really wanna say like, hey, here's why we're different. Here's some of our brand USPs. Here's why you should care. Here's our brand story story and why you should care. And here's some of the benefits of shopping with your company, right? The why you should care piece is really important. The, uh, again, so many brands just like are like, hey, here's our great brand story, but like no one cares at the end of the day. The next piece is just the layout. So layout example here would be like logo reminder. And that could be like reminding people about the discount from email one. That could also be something about the found, uh, founder or the brand story. You can have the founder in the header. That actually works quite well. People buy from people and people like that. You could have that founder message the brand story, maybe something about the team there, CTA, and then maybe some USPs or differentiation in there as well. And then usually we'll finish that up with another CTA, big fan of CTAs. So email number three is offer reminder and education. So what we're doing here is educating people about your product, how to's, what makes your brand unique. Now, a lot of people are going to purchase off of the first email and maybe the second email. This is a really good opportunity to start handling some people's objections. So dealing with uh, or sharing some social proof, sharing some reviews, some testimonials, and it's also a really good opportunity to display some of your most popular products. Depending on what you have, depending on the connections that you have, depending on the features that you might have, you might want to highlight a celebrity or brand endorsements. Really what you're trying to do here is build that social proof and really kind of like build that uh, trust and belief behind your brand too. Now, typically what we want to do is showcase some of those top products and then show off some social proof uh, or reviews below that. So example here again could be, hey, we got logo header, we've got our subheader, we've got a headline, we've got um, the USPs or how to's, um, some product education, we've got CTA, again, depending on what you're doing there, you know what you're going to want to change up that CTA. And then optional here, showcasing some reviews, like what our customers say, PR, hey, we've been featured in this, we've been featured in that, that goes a long way to really not only educate people, but like build that trust with people. So email four, this is where it's supposed to get cool. Uh, email four is again, more social proof and top sellers, it kind of depends on what you're doing, you don't want to have the same, the exact same email in both. So if your product doesn't really need a lot of education or how to's or that kind of thing, then you're probably going to have something that's more social proofy. If it's more social proof and like you're really focusing on that, then you probably won't want to have another social proof email, right? You might want to focus on top sellers or maybe this email is all about top sellers and then you focus on social proof. There's a little bit of an art and a science here. If what you notice is um, like, for example, if you set up email three and email three is all about social proof and it's doing supremely mediocre. And then you look at email four and you're like, holy, like this one does, it, it has like a hundred percent higher purchase rate or whatever. And instead of focusing on social proof there, you're focusing on top sellers. You should probably move that top seller one earlier on because earlier on and closer to the action point that people have had, they are going to purchase more. So if you move that earlier on in the process, you'll probably get more sales from that. Just a little trick. Uh, if you want to, you want to try that. So again, email for build more trust, testimonials, reviews, UGC, PR. You also might want to incorporate some customer favorites uh, or trending now. And a really cool thing you can do is actually incorporate dynamic content in here. So you could be like, hey, here's some trending products. So you don't have to constantly refresh it, especially if you have like inventory problems or if you if you run into, um, you know, you only make limited uh, rounds of products, right? This can go a really long way and help out a ton. Again, that structure is going to uh, depend on what you actually have in there. Email five, this is where we're 
kind of like reminding people, hey, this is the last chance. Ideally, you actually have this expire. That is the ideal situation here, right? We wanna create some urgency and be like, hey, listen, the discount code is gonna expire in the next 24 hours. This is your last chance to use it. If there are other objections that people might have, um, for example, if you sell frozen goods or if you sell food or something and pe like one of people's concerns is going to be like, uh, is it going to spoil? Is it going to be OK? Like, how do you ship frozen goods? I didn't know this until I started doing this stuff, but that's one of the objections that people will have. And there's kind of like processes that you can use if you are doing that. You want to share that, right? You want to be like, hey, satisfaction guarantee, arrive cold guarantee. It will be good. It will not spoil. You will not uh, order our steak and then receive it lukewarm. Like those are the objections that people might have in that situation but depending on what your business is, those objections are going to change. Layout example here, again, really like I would keep this one pretty basic. So like logo, header, subheader, headline, depending on what other objections you might have, you may want to incorporate that as well, but this can be a really short and sweet one. And then email six, again, this is going to vary based off of what you have, but this could be a product quiz. So essentially what this might look like is, hey, if, if someone hasn't, like they've got to email six, they're probably about eight to 10 days into this welcome series. If they haven't purchased yet, we want to figure out maybe either what pain points they have that our products, they don't feel like our products solve or what products they might be interested in. Uh, or it could just be that they need some support, like choosing a product. So it could be one of those three things. It could be either like a product quiz. It could be someone touching base, customer service, text only email can work really well here. But what we've done for, for some of our clients, and I just made a very brief layout here, but it could be like logo, header, CTA, and then a quiz style format where you have like two, like basically six different options for people to select. And then it's like, hey, what are you looking for this? Like, what are you most interested in? And then you've got six different tiles. And then based off of the tile, they click, they're tagged with a certain profile property, i.e., hey, they're interested in sleep. And, and then what happens is in the next email in the flow or in campaigns, they're then redirected or they're sent to a certain flow where we're just talking about sleep or we're just talking about beauty products and that type of thing. So a lot of really cool stuff you can do there. Now, the last thing here is just test. Now, this is where I don't see very many brands do this at all, but they leave so many, so much money on the table because they don't. First thing and the biggest thing, the thing that will have the biggest result, it's just testing different offers, testing 10% off versus 15% off, testing 10% off versus free shipping, $10 off versus 10% off. Different promos and different offers are going to work better for different brands. Um, an example of this is actually, and so just reversing a little bit, we actually had a client who was using 35% off as their promo offer. I thought this was super silly. It was ridiculous. And I'm like, why are we starting there? Like, there's not a lot of room. You're giving up a ton of margin. And like, there's not really a lot of room to go down in campaigns, even if you want to have a sale. So I was like, hey, we should not do 35% off. And instead, we should try 20% off just as like a big jump downwards to see what impact that has. Funny enough, their conversion rates and their opt-in rates went up. So not only did their opt-in rates go up in the pop-up, right? It was up like 47%, but also the conversion rate and the amount of conversions and the conversion dollar value in their welcome series also went up, which is crazy, right? But the thought process behind that is like, if you're giving away like the whole farm right away, you tend to devalue things a little bit more. So it's always worth testing this out. Bigger discounts don't always mean better results. Now, if you're offering like 3% off, that's going to suck <laughs> candidly. But if you're offering 3% off uh, on a $20,000 product, we tested this with the brand as well. Instead of like their offer previously was like 3% off. And that kind of sounds like it sucks, even if it's off a $20,000 or $40,000 purse. What sounds a lot better though is $500 off or $300 off. And the funny thing is that actually works out to less, like a lot less than 3%. But psychologically, people are like, oh, 500 bucks. They see 3% and they're like, eh. And they have to do math, burn calories, right? So again, this is why testing offers can be really, really helpful. And honestly, this will have the biggest impact on your welcome series performance. The second thing is segment Implementation with zero party data. So zero party data is the data that we'll collect in a pop up. And typically that's going to be something about someone's desired outcome. That could be something about someone's uh, de desired state, right? Desired outcome or desired state, or it could be what they're interested in shopping for. So if you have a clothing boutique and you send sell men's, women's and kids clothing, you might ask, hey, what are you most interested in men's, women's or children's clothing? And then based off of that, people get a different welcome series. A lot that you can do there. 
to be honest. The next thing is just A-B testing subject lines. This is gonna help your open rates. You could test urgency versus personalization based subject lines. The next thing would be optimizing different timing. So testing out different cadences. I wouldn't use the cadence that uh, Clavio uses because uh, it's not very good, to be honest. So usually we'll do like every day for the first four and then every other day. And maybe it's every, you know, maybe it's every two days or maybe it's every three days after that first four, depending on the customer life cycle as well. Like how long does it take from uh, initial contact with you to purchase, right? Some brands it's 17 days. So you might actually want to space it out more than every one per day. It's, again, very brand dependent. Number five is content variation. So again, we're getting a little bit deeper in here. If we're testing out different offers, that is the highest level thing. If we're testing out subject lines, we're gonna get more people to open. And if we're testing out different variations or and if we're testing out optimizing timing, this is also gonna impact open rates and potentially click rates. And if we're testing out content variation, this is gonna impact click rates. So again, I would test in this sequence because it'll help a ton. And honestly, if you get a, a ton more clicks, but your open rate sucks, it doesn't really matter. Beyond that our sixth test is CTA placement and wording. Right? So we're testing shop now versus claim your discount versus other things like that. Now, hopefully this video helped. If you did enjoy it and you want to learn a little bit more about collecting zero party data, there is a video on my channel that runs through collecting zero party data using a pop-up, uh, which is one of the most underrated things that I think you can do in email marketing. So if you do have any questions about that, or if you want to go check that out, I should uh, add the link right about here. Thanks so much and have a great day.